a very good morning class 11th so as till now we have finished with come almost more than half of the photosynthesis process right we have discussed uh, our light reaction we have discussed our both pathways c3 and c4 pathways also now after now you have understanding of c3 as well as c4 pathways we are going to now discuss that of our uh, photo respiration process in this lecture actually today's lecture i have split it uh, this lecture into two parts because we are going to finish with our photosynthesis today so i in my first part i'm going to discuss photo respiration and the second part of my lecture i will discuss the factors which are going to affect uh, photosynthesis process so if we say photorespiration as you can just look its name photorespiration it means something up is good getting produced like respiration product but it is happening in the presence of light so it is uh, you can correlate it with the respiration process but yes it is not exactly the similar one but yes products are same so basically it is a light induced because it is uh, it is we are calling it as a photo it is dependent on light it is in due to light induced oxidation of a part of rubp it means uh, till now you have understood that rubp help in the combining of uh, it uh, help in the attachment with the CO2 basically it help in fixation of CO2 it, com it combines with CO2 but here we are saying that RUBP is combining with oxygen right and it is releasing CO2 but when it fix carbon dioxide then it release it gave us glucose but here something different we are getting that is CO2 so that is what we are going to discuss today that what is happening in photorespiration process with it this process is without any formation of ATP in the green cells of the plant there is no formation of ATP during this process no formation of ATP no NADPH2 no energy power is reduced uh, no uh, is getting released basically we don't get any kind of ATP from this process now the if we uh, talk about the normal in the normal condition c3 pathway when we talk about that what is taken in co2 we are taking in and it is combining with the co2 with the help of an enzyme now you know that that is ribulose biphosphate carboxylase oxygenase but here if i ask you that what is how rubisco is acting as here here rubisco is functioning as carboxylase right and but uh, what is getting released as you know that glucose is formed and glucose is getting formed and oxygen is getting released so with the help of rubisco we are having we are performing able to perform our c3 cycle so rubisco is acting here as a carboxylase in the normal c3 pathway rubisco but if we say in the photorespiration in photorespiration uh, rubisco it acts as oxygenase in photorespiration it means something now uh, rubisco is not acting as a uh, carboxygenase so it means it is not able to fix carbon so carbon dioxide fixation is getting decreased here you need to understand this point i'm repeating again and again that in normal c3 pathway rubisco activity is as the carboxylase right but in photorespiration rubisco is acting as a oxygenase it means something something is getting changed few conditions in which it act as a um, oxygenase because it does not happen in a normal way it means something is getting changed due to which this rubisco is changing its action jiski wajah se rubisco change ho raha hai now conditions so those conditions in which rubisco act as oxygenase the first most condition is high temperature as well as high concentration of oxygen if the plants they are 
getting a very high temperature or they are facing very high temperature and they are dealing with high concentration of oxygen it means the plants will show photo respiration process but if they are in the normal condition temperature is optimum concentration of oxygen is optimum then they will show us c3 pathway right but once the uh, rubisco that is dealing with high temperature and high oxygen concentration it start behaving like the oxygenase now this is a uh, one uh, just uh, give you outline of photo respiration what in photo respiration oxygen is taking in it is joining with rubp rubisco is acting here as oxygenase and co2 is released now we know that photosynthesis product uh the photosynth in photosynthesis co2 getting fixed but in photorespiration the thing is now getting same thing which were we fixing now in photorespiration that is released if you just look uh attentively what is happen what happens in respiration oxygen is taken in and carbon dioxide is given out that is what happen in respiration but as this uh, this respiration uh the products are same but this respiration is taking place in the presence of light as well as product is little bit as well as the cycle is little bit different uh, so we but uh gases they are same so we are calling it as a photo respiration now the main thing uh, now you understand that photosynthesis carbon dioxide is fixed but photo respiration see that which we were fixing here it is releasing co2 right so one side it we were fixing that carbon dioxide for our glucose synthesis and here it is releasing that carbon dioxide so it means somewhere it is not a good process for the plant it is little bit harmful process for the plant we will see in our next uh, points that how it is harmful process a uh, example which we can write down in photo respiration is temperate plant that is wheat rice beans you can mention them all basically these are all those plants which perform c3 pathway but they perform as i uh, already told you that they perform c3 pathway in normal conditions when conditions are optimum accurate for them but when they are facing the conditions like temperature is very high uh, concentration of co uh, concentration of o2 is getting very high then this rubisco start acting as oxygenase so it will start combining with the oxygen and will start releasing the co2 now photo respiration if we talk about in detail it uh, take place in three organelles first is the chloroplast then the things that transfer to peroxisome and the last one is mitochondrion so chloroplast peroxisome and mitochondrion they these three organelles they are involved in photo respiration as you can see the diagram we will first understand this step by step as in the normal condition this rubp help in fixation of co2 and during this time this rubp act as carboxylase clear this rubp act as carboxylase now after carboxylase the first stable product is formed and then it for regenerated and c3 cycle is complete we we are not going to concentrate on that because we have already done with the c3 cycle and the product glucose is released so this this thing is happening in the chloroplast but if a plant is having high temperature high oxygen that time rubp start combining with the oxygen and rubp will behave as oxygenase rubp that is rubisco ribulose biphosphate will uh, now behave as oxygenase and the first product is formed that is the phosphoglycolate phosphoglycolate will release its phosphate and change into glycolate which is the stable product so this glycolate is a two carbon compound so that is why photo respiration is also known as c 
to cycle and this is also known as glycolate cycle glycolate why glycolate because uh, glycolate cycle because the first product stable product formed in photorespiration is two carbon compound which is glycolate now this glycolate in the presence of oxygen only it will change into glyoxylate and ultimately form the glycine uh, that is the amino acid and this glycolate will uh, phosphoglyc from phosphoglycolate this will enter into per this is happening in the peroxisome this glycine which is formed in the peroxisome it will enter into glyc uh, the, now enter into the mitochondria now two molecules of glycine and one molecule of serine right so now two molecules uh, of glycine ultimately going to form the serine and nh2 is released here here again once again listen to me in mitochondria this glycine two molecule of glycine change into one molecule of it's a uh, serine and release one molecule of carbon dioxide one carbon basically one it has two molecules so one molecule is released here in the form of serine and one molecule is released here that is the co2 so here co2 is released so first oxygen was entering in the chloroplast and co2 is released in the mitochondria why i am more stressing on this area because in your need the questions they are asked from this step that tell us the step that which is that step in which carbon dioxide is getting released when glycine change into serine that is the step when carbon dioxide is released during photorespiration now this uh, this uh, during this reaction nh2 is released this nh2 go back to the peroxisome now it uh, react with it attach with the serine and combining the serine plus nh2 they will form our glycine and this so serine further then it will change into pyruvate and glycerate and ultimately this glycerate will change into pga which is entering which is uh, uh, ultimately entering into the chloroplast so the main stress point they are here that uh, the two carbon compound which is formed here is glycolate or sometimes they have not mentioned glycolate they only mention phosphoglycolate then both are correct you can mention the phosphoglycolate as your correct answer when glycolate is not mentioned if the glycolate is mentioned there then mark it right and the second is when co2 is release when glycine change into serine so these are three cells you can see chloroplast peroxisome and mitochondria in the normal condition there will be the fixation of co2 but in the conditions which are totally different that is high concentration of oxygen high temperature that time these plants they show the c3 i specifically i say that c3 plants show a process which is known as photorespiration now uh, when this co2 is released i already told you when glycine two molecule of glycine change into serine one molecule of carbon dioxide is released and one molecule of serine is formed now during as you see there is there any step where we have written atp nadph2 no not at all so the main thing you have need to understand here no atp no nadph2 formed here so we are not gaining anyone nothing gain nothing is uh, special for the plants so photorespiration is considered as wasteful or harmful process then will you will ask ma'am then why it is happening see it is happening only when the conditions they are little bit different for the plants the concept of uh, you have to uh, understood already you understood now that rubp is binding here with oxygen and forming two carbon compound that phosphoglycolate it is a wasteful process why because neither the synthesis of sugar nor the formation of atp it results in the it um, results in the release of co2 and with the uh, it release uh, result in the release of uh, basically co2 which which is our which is fixed 
during which is fixed during photosynthesis process so basically it is using that what we were fixed in photosynthesis this process is releasing the same thing it is releasing that thing which we were fixing so it is not a good process for the plants in c4 plants photorespiration does not occur why as we have done with the c4 plants and you know that there is a presence of bundle sheath cells it means they are so smart they have adapted themselves so they cannot have to they uh, need do not need to go through this wasteful process so in c4 plants photorespiration does not occur because they have mechanism they have adaptations that increases the concentration of co2 at the site of rubisco activity and when the co2 concentration will be increased rubisco will behave as carboxylase and where this adaptation has occurred in the bundle sheath cells they have formed a layer of cells deeper into the plants that of uh, these bundle sheath cells they are having they have minimize the chances of oxygen so that is why if there will be no oxygen the only option left is the co2 they make it sure that rubisco should rubisco should function as the carboxylase they always they are so adapted that they ensure that rubisco function as carboxylase they minimize its oxygenase activity and maintaining the environment oxygen free which is very good for them to not go through the photo respiration process so this is all about our photo respiration process in my first part of this lecture the last about this topic is we are going to discuss the uh, second part that is the factors factors affecting the rate of photosynthesis that is the last lecture of our photosynthesis so i will meet you continuing with this part i will meet you in my next part of this